Okay, in this lesson, we're going to build upon the knowledge of the previous two lessons where the students talked about forces and loads and strong shapes. Today, we're going to talk about a fourth element that's important in structural engineering, and that is materials analysis. So we're going to have the students practice analyzing different materials for their properties um, and also some of their constraints and some of their benefits. Uh, as I am walking you through the demo, which they're going to do before the main activity, I'm going to ask Leslie, our videographer, the kinds of questions that you should be asking your students as you're walking them through the demonstration. One. Okay, so Leslie, um, who's representing our students at this point, she's made her prediction, she performed the action, and now she has to make observations, and you, with your guiding questions, are going to help her turn those observations into um, some kind of conclusion about the materials that she was working with. So we put the two materials, marshmallows and dominoes, to the test. We put the heavy books on top. Um, have the kids get down at eye level with the with the setup and make their observations. So Leslie, what did you see happen with the dominoes once we put the book on top? They stood up. So they, they stayed the same, right? Yeah. And when you originally were analyzing the materials, you said that they were rigid, meaning hard and also stable. They're not going to fall over. So what happened? Was that true? When we put the book on top? Yeah. So um, her predictions were correct. Nothing happened with the book. They didn't fall over. And here are the marshmallows. What was your prediction about the marshmallows? I think that they would stay the same as well. So she said that they would stay the same and they would also hold up the book, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened with the marshmallows? They were squished. So they were squished by, and here's a, a non-squished marshmallow. But how much did they squish? A half. Not half. Halfway. They're like half the height of the uh, original size of the marshmallow. So she was right in the sense, and this is this is how you have to break down their observations. She was correct in the sense that they held up the book. The book is still there. Nothing fell over. But the marshmallows didn't stay the same. They changed in the sense that they were squished or compressed a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. So at this point looking at these two materials, if we put them to a weight test where we put a weight on top, which, which material performs better? The dominoes? Okay. Um, why? Because they're rigid. Because they're rigid and what else? Why wouldn't you want to build with the marshmallows supporting your book or your, your building? <laughs> because they change size and the dominoes stay the same size. So when you're building something, do you want what you're building with to change size? No. That's because that's a little bit unpredictable, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like if you imagine if there were people, you know, underneath this one, underneath the dominoes, they'd be okay, right? Yeah. Under here, that might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something to think about. Although, I guess if you made this building and you knew that it was going to sink down and not sink down anymore and it just stayed that way, that could still be a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. So they could just think through all those things. Um, now we're going to put them through uh, a third test, our materials. So we did the weight on top, the top load. Um, now we're going to put them through an earthquake test. So our simulated earthquake, we're going to shake the table side to side and see how these two materials perform. Okay, so let's do the test. Oh, I almost forgot. Leslie, make your prediction. I'm going to shake the table and simulate an earthquake. What do you think is going to happen to uh, the dominoes? They're going to stay the same. Why? 
because they're rigid. They're strong. Um, rigid? Yeah. Okay, so again, she made her prediction and she supported it with evidence. Her characteristics, her original characteristics of dominoes were that they were strong and they were rigid. So she thinks even in an earthquake test, they're going to stay standing. So again, supporting every claim that she makes with evidence and she's describing the properties of the dominoes. What do you think is going to happen with the marshmallows once you, or once I shake the table? They're going to fall over. The marshmallows are going to fall over? Taking the book with it? Yeah, the book. Why do you think so? Support your claim. Because they're soft and light and they won't withstand an earthquake. Okay, they're soft and light. They're not going to withstand the shaking of an earthquake. So again, she's describing the properties, bringing that back and supporting her prediction. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we actually do the test. I'm going to shake the table from side to side like that. And if you are set up in your classrooms, you don't have tables that are easy to shake, you can um, put the setups on a, a serving tray and you can do the same thing with the serving tray. So here we go. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> so let's say make your observations. What happened with the dominoes? They fell down. <laughs> they fell over. And why do you think they fell over? Because they are rigid. They're strong. They're not something that you could bend easily, but why did they fall over when the, when the table was shaken? Because they moved. The table moved their spot. Because maybe, so the table moved their spot. They just shifted. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And that's actually what they did. They just kind of toppled over. So remember, anything underneath this book would be squished by now. Um, what happened with the marshmallows? And I'm actually still shaking, so we have aftershocks still going. What's going on with the... The marshmallow building. They're not falling over. The book's not falling over. The marshmallows didn't fall over and the books didn't fall over. Are the marshmallows getting shorter? Are they getting squished even more? A little, but they're moving around. A they're little. moving around. Are they, is the book moving around? Yes. So the book's moving around. The marshmallows are moving around. The marshmallows are getting slightly more squished, but overall it kind of stays the same, right? Yeah. So anything that was underneath this book during an earthquake, would it still be okay? Safe. <laughs> it's, it's safe. So what was interesting about observations? What was surprising to you? That the dominoes that were strong fell first versus the marshmallows that were light and soft, they withstanded the earthquake test. Yeah. And you know the reasons why we're not going to get into actual physical forces and absorption of energy, but they can clearly see that with different tests and different loads, some materials are going to form perform better than others, and that that can change, right? So, with the weight forced down on top, the dominoes worked better. With the shaking, um, like an earthquake, the marshmallows worked better. So, if you're a building engineer and you're building in California, what do you have to consider? Do you still have to make sure that it can hold heavy weight your building? Yep and also earthquakes. <laughs> yeah, and it also has to withstand earthquakes. And if you were living in a place like uh, on the East Coast that had hurricanes, what would you have to make sure it could withstand? Forces. Oh. What kind of hurricane forces? Like what usually happens during a hurricane? Wind. Wind, right? So a lot of times in buildings in hurricane areas, they have to withstand the side force of heavy winds hitting it at any angle. So all the things that you have to understand as a building engineer and think about. So technically, you're in California, you're going to build a high building that has to hold a lot of weight. You also have earthquake prone areas, so you would have to somehow combine how you use different materials, right? And that's something that in the final project that you do with your group, you're going to have to figure out what combination of materials and design work the best. 